One of the most interesting and distinctive creatures in the tides is the sea anemone. Often called the flower of the sea, the sea anemone is well known for its plant-like appearance, as well as its many vibrant colors and patterns. But, due to its unique anatomy, the sea anemone lacks a locomotive ability. They are found latched on to the sides or undersides of the rocks in the water, or burrowed into the mud and the sand. The only way an anemone can change its location is by catching a ride on a larger animal, usually a crab, or simply detaching itself from the rock and dragging itself to a new location using the foot at the base of its body called a pedal disc. This foot is the main muscle keeping them firmly grasped to the surface of the rocks as the tides roll in and out. Just as the other inhabitants of the tide pools, the sea anemone has its very own specific means of defense and survival within the tides. In low tide, when the water recedes back into the ocean, the sea anemone is faced with dramatic change in temperatures. In order to cope with the scorching heat, open air, and constant winds, the sea anemones close up when the tide goes out. In addition, they live in colonies and coat their bodies with sand and pieces of shells to protect themselves from the elements and conserve moisture. Anemones attached to the rocks during low tide reside in crevices where they stay cool and moist. Anemones out of the water generally retract their tentacles into their bodies where they may appear to be no more than wet, squishy blobs. Other than nature's elements, sea anemones face even more predators with the low tide. Seagulls take advantage of the anemone's open position, making it easy for them to pluck them off the rocks. However, possibly the most dangerous threat is the ignorance of humans. Unaware, some may step on them during the low tide. During high tide, the tide pool environment changes entirely. Once the anemones are completely submerged in water, they remove their tentacles from within their bodies, making them look very similar to flowers. It is here that the anemone's defense becomes its most useful ability. When faced with a predator or threat, the sea anemone's defense is the same as when it gets its food. Located within the tentacles are elements that sting, called nematocysts. In each nematocyst, there is a toxic compound that is released within each sensory hair. When an organism touches the tentacle, the hair cell attaches itself onto the creature and injects a small amount of poison. This is what gives the anemone its characteristic stingy feeling. The poison contains neurotoxins, which, when injected into the prey, either sting or paralyze the victim. Using these tactics, the sea anemone co-inhabits the beautiful tide pools with the many other unique creatures and plants living there. Together, they form one of the most amazing communities here in our very own backyard. A tide pool is a pool of water remaining after the tide has retreated. Many forms of life live in and around the tide pools. The intertidal zone is the area between high and low tide. The water is rich with nutrients such as plankton, dead organisms, and algae, which are replenished by each incoming tide and used as food by many of the inhabitants. The high intertidal zone is exposed and covered twice a day by high and low tides. The low intertidal zone is exposed only once per day by the low tide and the subtidal zone remains submerged in water. Different animals and plants live in each zone. However, in some places, the zones overlap. Tide pool residents have a very challenging and difficult existence. They live in an area that is constantly changing. They need to survive the heavy pounding of the waves and the movement of the rocks and sand. When the tide goes out, they must be able to withstand long stretches with no water, the hot sun, wind, birds, and people. The inhabitants have different ways of keeping themselves from being swept away by the retreating tide. Barnacles glue themselves to the rocks head first and wave their feet in the water to capture food. Shells such as limpets make depressions in the rocks that give them protection. After grazing on algae when the tide is high, they return to the same rock and clamp on tight to brace themselves for low tide. The sea urchins also make depressions in rocks that they return to and clamp themselves onto for protection. Some shells secrete mucus, a glue-like substance, in order to conserve moisture and hold themselves onto rocks. Other shells drill holes in the rocks where they live and are protected. If you take an empty shell from the tide pools, you could be depriving a hermit crab of a home or a sea anemone of its shell cover. Please leave everything in the tide pools. Be careful of the green algae on the rocks as it can be extremely slippery and could easily cause you to fall. Watch for the incoming tide and beware of the ocean at all times. You do not want to get washed out to sea by an unexpected wave. If you would like to experience the tide pools yourself, 
check out either Abalone Cove or Cabrillo Marine Beach.